A recent systematic review finds there is no correlation with saturated fat consumption and cardiovascular disease risk or mortality. In today's show, we're going to break down the key takeaways from this 230-page document that's free right on the internet titled Reduction in Saturated Fat Intake for Cardiovascular Disease. This was a review, part of the Cochrane Library database of systematic reviews. And essentially, in this systematic review, they're only looking at randomized controlled trials where dietary fat and or saturated fat was manipulated, and the duration of the randomized controlled trials had to be at least 24 months duration. And I think this is really important because you know, many people are still concerned about saturated fat. They buy low-fat milk, low-fat yogurt, lean meat instead of meat that has some fat in it, right? Believe it or not, there's nutrients in fat uh, and fat soluble vitamins, vitamin A, vitamin D. Uh, you need fat in your diet to a certain level. But many health authorities are saying that saturated fat should be no more than 7% of your total energy intake. And I think this is worth diving into because again, so many people are worried about butter. So they buy margarine and it's crazy because we know that margarine, some of it, most of the trans fats have been removed from the food supply, which is great, but we know that these foods are not necessarily any more healthy. So let's talk about a summary of the main results from this review, again, of randomized controlled trials where dietary fat and or saturated fat was manipulated for at least two years duration. They say the systematic review of long-term randomized controlled trials of saturated fat reduction suggests that reducing saturated fat for at least two years probably has little or no effect on all-cause or cardiovascular mortality, but probably caused a 21% reduction in people experiencing cardiovascular events. And so I think it's important to acknowledge that there is some evidence to suggest that if you've already had an event like a heart attack, possibly reducing saturated fat might improve or reduce your risk of having a second event in the future. So if I had a family member that say had a heart attack, my advice to them would be to avoid a lot of liquid fat, seed oils, a lot of liquid butter, for example, maybe not so much buttery coffees and things of that sort. But in terms of preventing a primary cardiovascular event like a first heart attack, the evidence to suggest that manipulating the saturated fat content in your diet is not going to influence the outcome and will not change whether or not or increase the probability of you having a heart attack. I think it's important to acknowledge that several years ago, the president of the American Heart Association, who has been promoting low-fat diets for a long time, this institution has, he had a major heart attack during the actual conference. Uh, and, and so I don't know what his diet looked like, but I think you can read a little bit more uh, about his story and Again, maybe I'll get some flack for talking about this, but again, this is an institution that has been beating the low-fat drum for a long time, saying butter is bad, eat you know, vegetable oil instead, and the president of this institution had a major heart attack at a conference to vilify fat. So enough said. Let's go on and talk about this image right here. And this shows the outcome. The outcome are hard endpoints, all-cause mortality, cardiovascular mortality, combined cardiovascular events, and myocardial infarctions or heart attacks. As you can see here in the comments, uh, reducing saturated fat in terms of all, reducing all-cause mortality, uh, there is little or no difference to all-cause mortality. So again, trying to eat a low-fat diet will not prevent you from dying according to this analysis of systematic reviews. What about preventing cardiovascular mortality? As they say in the comments here, and th these are analysis of multiple human randomized controlled trials, finding that reducing saturated fat intake probably makes little or no difference to cardiovascular mortality. Again, a Cochrane Review database finding, well, what about combined cardiovascular events like preventing a stroke or uh, cardiovascular disease or peripheral vascular disease? They say, reducing saturated fat intake probably reduces cardiovascular mortality to a greater extent with greater cholesterol reduction. So there is possibly evidence here that reducing saturated fat probably reduces cardiovascular mortality and it might depend upon cholesterol concentrations. And I would add whether or not this was a secondary event or a primary event. Now, what about for heart attacks? Uh, they go on to say the effect of reducing saturated fat intake on risk of myocardial infarction is unclear as the evidence is very low quality. So again, there's not a clear cut picture here with regards to saturated fat intake and cardiovascular disease. Now, before we look at this funnel plot comparison with fat modification or reducing fat or a usual diet on total mortality and cardiovascular mortality, I just wanna pause and say thank you for being here. I appreciate your likes, your comments, your shares. If you're enjoying this content, hit that like button and please leave a comment in the comment section below. Since we're talking about metabolic health, a natural tool that can help you is the Berberine Fasting Accelerator by Myoscience. This is 
a unique natural compound that has been used in traditional Chinese medicine for the better part of 3,000 years. Berberine is amazing. It's very effective. It can help curb those pesky evening food cravings, and it also can help increase ketones and support metabolic health. This is a natural product that you actually can feel, especially if you take it in the evening time and you test your blood glucose or ketones after, you will really notice an appetite suppressant effect and changes in your metabolic health. There's over 200 reviews over at myoscience.com from people just like you who are using this to kickstart their fast and curb their evening food cravings. You can save over at myoscience with the code podcast at checkout. So this funnel plot is quite interesting. They say in the description, there was little or no effect regardless of what nutrients were used to replace saturated fat removed, including replacement with polyunsaturated fat, monounsaturated fat, carbohydrates, or protein. Effects did not differ by main substitution, study duration, or baseline saturated fat intake. So there's really no correlation with when you start to manipulate saturated fat intake in your diet in terms of total mortality, uh, there's no correlation. And so that's why we have systematic reviews that include only randomized controlled trials that last for at least two years when it comes to uh, cardiovascular disease and all-cause mortality. Okay, so what about secondary outcomes? If someone's already had a heart attack, can we help prevent a future heart attack if they manipulate the saturated fat content in their diet? I think this is important to cover. So in conclusion, what does this systematic review find? They say, we found that reducing saturated fat for at least two years suggests no clear effects on all cause or cardiovascular mortality, but a 21% reduction in combined cardiovascular events. And most of this data actually comes from preventing secondary events, which I would like to uh, think is important. So if someone has already had an event, already had a heart attack or a stroke or some such, there is some evidence to suggest that possibly reducing saturated fat might help with that. They go on to say heterogeneity in this result was partially explained by greater reductions in cardiovascular events in studies with greater serum total cholesterol reductions. Effects of reducing saturated fat on other cardiovascular and cancer outcomes were either very small or unclear, but it should be noted that risk ratios were all one or lower, no harm was indicated. Effects of non-communicable disease risk factors were small but positive. They talk about serum cholesterol, LDL cholesterol, blood pressure, or neutral when it comes to uh, changes with LDL cholesterol or triglycerides. They say, what is the effect of reducing saturated fat on coronary heart disease mortality and other coronary heart disease events? We found little or no evidence of reducing saturated fat on non-fatal MI and cardiovascular events, but the incidence of, of myocardial infarction, stroke, and cardiovascular events was of very low quality. Uh, however, all risk ratios were less than one. So this goes to show that there's really no ample evidence to suggest that you should be intentionally trying to reduce your risk of saturated fat intake if you have not had a heart attack. Uh, there might be some small evidence to suggest that in secondary prevention, you've already had an event that possibly reducing saturated fat intake in the diet might be beneficial or helpful. But what happens is when people cut out fat in their diet, they start having a boneless, skinless chicken breast uh, and really, really lean meat with no uh, fat in it. It's pretty low calorie. So you need to replace those calories with something. And oftentimes that comes in the form of sugar and processed carbs and uh, processed foods. And so when you start to replace saturated fat with processed junk food, there is no health benefit with that. And even various activists like Chris Gardner over at Stanford recognizes that. So I think it's important that if you, maybe you are worried about your fat intake in your diet. You just believe that because you've been told that for years and years and years. Um, well, you got to ask yourself, what are you replacing those calories with? Is it a granola bar? Is it Oreo cookies? Is it junk food? That's not going to be helpful. And then also we need to consider that swapping out, you know, a whole food fat source like butter for a highly processed margarine or plant-based uh, butter-like compound is not going to be helpful. These are ultra-refined seed oils that are aggregated via industrial processing, and that is not going to be health promoting either. So friends, I would love to know what you think of this video and this research. If you want to really nerd out on the history of fat, maybe we can dive into that. They talk about the seven countries studies uh, and, and all the data in the 1950s and so forth and how this correlation with saturated fat and heart disease really started uh, around the 1950s when there was a demonstrable increase in cardiovascular disease between 1920 and 1950, which coincides with the introduction of Crisco and sugar. So I think Really, we should be focusing more on minimizing consumption of sugar and processed foods, as well as the novel 
industrial seed oils like canola and cotton seed oil and soybean oil. Uh, and so we'll do a deeper dive on that uh, down the road. But until then, I appreciate you tuning all the way through. Hopefully you found some value out of this, as well as wanting to check out this systematic review and share this with your primary health professional if they are indeed convincing you that you should remove saturated fat, butter, and red meat from your diet. With that, my friends, we'll part ways, but I appreciate you tuning in and we'll catch you in a future video down the road.